All right, so who wants to eat some lab-grown meat? <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, me neither. I prefer to eat Whole Foods, typically from Whole Foods. Uh, sorry, kids. Looks like we're going to go to Jersey Mike's and hope that future science will save us. Anyway, so there's a company called Biomade that is a public-private company that has received more than $500 million in funding from the Defense Department. And they announced earlier this past month that it is seeking proposals to develop innovations in food production that reduce the carbon dioxide footprint of food production at DOD operational environments, according to an online announcement. Basically, they're trying to feed the military lab-grown meat. What is lab-grown meat exactly, and how is lab-grown meat cultivated? Well, it starts off with cells which can come from a fertilized egg, a special bank of stored cells or tissue initially taken from a living animal. The cells are then mixed with a broth of nutrients that the cells need to grow and divide in. Then the cells are triggered to turn into skeletal muscle, fat, and connective tissue. After days or weeks, the cells are removed from tanks and are shaped into products such such as nuggets, like your favorite dino nuggets from the store that come in a nice bag. So the products that are currently easiest to make like this are like ground meat or products that are like meat that are processed inside of like the freezer sections at the grocery store or whatever. There are currently some companies out there that are trying to make lab grown chicken breasts and steak, but we're not quite there yet. Now people are asking, is it actually meat? Well, experts say it's real meat, but it's created in a different way than actual meat is created. It's not made from a living organism that's feasting on plant and flora and fauna, it's instead grown inside of a lab in a petri dish inside of steel cylinders or something. Now, just to make sure that there's an understood difference, it's not the same thing as plant-based meats because it's not like most of them don't contain plant products, although some do, but currently it's not being sold to grocery stores. It's not being sold to restaurants yet, but it's something that they're trying to develop because people want to make money. And obviously if they could monopolize on developing even more processed lab-grown meat, then somebody's going to make a ton of cash and it's not going to be me. And I don't like that. So anyway, back to the actual story at hand, which is the fact that the Department of Defense is funding private company called Biomade to produce or at least to do research on food production using these novel cell culture methods that are suitable for the production of cultivated meats or proteins in a lab environment. Now, earlier this year, Biomade received about $450 million of taxpayer cash to maintain that lab grown food product will reduce the Pentagon's carbon footprint. I know that the military is trying to reduce their overall carbon footprint as a general rule of thumb because we're trying to be more green, we're trying to be more cost efficient, we're trying to be more energy efficient. And I get that because you got to think about how many military bases we have around the world that we're supplying with chicken, beef, pork, whatever, like food in general. And they're shipping it all over the planet constantly to feed troops. Biomate is also soliciting proposals for processes that convert greenhouse gases and projects that develop bioproducts useful in mitigating the negative environmental impacts that either regionally or globally, including bioproducts that can be used to prevent or slow coastal erosion. Now, currently, Jack Hubbard, the executive director at the Center for the Environment and Welfare Consumer Group, said that taxpayer dollars should not be used to fund the lab-grown meat sector. I'm inclined to agree. Personally, I like to eat whole foods, like actual chicken, actual steak, eggs, fish. See, the problem is, is right now, so much food is processed in America and processed food is horrible for you. The best food you can eat is whole foods, like eating potatoes, eating rice, eating really clean pasta, but even pasta is super processed. Really, your best bet for carbohydrates is rice and potatoes because it came straight from a plant or straight from the ground. Same thing with like meats. Obviously, your best bet is eating actual whole foods meats, not frozen stuff, because it's just gonna be healthier for you. There's gonna be less preservatives, less chemicals, less plastics. Microplastics. Like the stuff that people say is stored in the you know what I'm saying? Anyway, there's a lot of people that are up in arms about this whole thing because they're like, hey, the troops shouldn't be used as lab rats or guinea pigs for your fake meat. You know, now I know people are not going to be like, oh, well, it's not fake meat. It's grown in a culture in a lab. It's actual meat. It's not made from plants. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. It's lab grown meat. And that's not whole foods. You didn't go out to the chicken coop and harvest a chicken. You didn't go hunt a deer and harvest a deer. You grew it in a Petri dish in a lab. Personally, I don't want to be a guinea pig for that. And I'm sure that a lot of other 
other folks in the military probably don't want to be the test rabbits or test mice for this stuff either. Another thing that Jack Hubbard said was that our troops deserve better than to be served lab-grown meat produced in bioreactors with immortalized cells and chemicals. He also said, unfortunately, this effort is being driven by an agenda that is political and anti-farmer. Our soldiers should never be used as guinea pigs. Now, a former Defense Department official named Matt Spence said, one of the most immediate political, feasible, and high-impact ways to address global climate or global change and climate change is for the U.S. government to invest in and accelerate alternative ways to produce meat because they feel like cattle and all these other animals that are being raised and harvested are producing a lot of CO2. But here's the thing, factory farming, okay, got it. Not the greatest thing for the environment, but there's a lot of very sustainable animal raising farms out there like white oak pastures, for example. White oak pastures is just one example, but they butcher meat from animals raised in a regenerative manner using humane animal management practices. And they started doing this in 1995 when they transitioned away from industrial agriculture techniques and began operating their farm as a living ecosystem. They now raise 10 species of humanely treated animals living in a symbiotic relationship with each other. Their lands are holistically managed to become increasingly a living organic medium that was teeming with life. Now, White Oak Pastures is a zero waste farm. They sell the meats and the poultry that they butcher on their farm to passionate consumers who care about the animals, land, and the community. The hides from the cattle they slaughter are dried for pet true raw hides or tanned and crafted into leather goods. The fat from the cattle is rendered down to create some of the purest tallow products available. The inedible viscera is composted to later be spread on the farm as rich organic matter to fertilize their soil. They've got tons of certifications like certified humane, land to market certified, American grass fed. The cows were born Roman grazed, hogs were born to root and wallow, chickens were born to scratch and peck. These are natural instinctive animal behaviors. Unfortunately, industrial commodity livestock production removes costs from meat production systems by raising animals in monocultural confinement systems that do not allow these instinctive behaviors. The animals live a good life. They get to live out there the way that they're supposed to live. It's all clean. It's farm to table. They are regenerative. They're sustainable. And this is just one example. I'm sure there's lots of others out there. Highly recommend that you look into it. Check them out if you guys... And by the way, they're not sponsoring me or paying me for this. I just have heard about them off of like the Joe Rogan podcast. Guy seems like a great dude. Their whole family's working on the farm together. Point is, there are sustainable ways to raise livestock that's regenerative, that doesn't increase the carbon footprint, and is sustainable. Another thing I found interesting, another article I read was that the National Cattlemen's Beef Association condemned the Department of Defense sponsored research grant that will fund the development of lab grown meat products by manufacturing company Biomade. They said, and I quote, it is outrageous that the Department of Defense is spending millions of taxpayer dollars to feed our heroes like lab rats. U.S. cattle producers raise the highest quality beef in the world with the lowest carbon footprint, and American troops deserve to be served that same wholesome natural meat and not ultra processed lab grown protein that is cooked up in a chemical filled bioreactor said NCBA Vice President of Government Affairs, Ethan Lane. He also said this misguided research project is a giant slap in the face to everyone that has served our country. Our veterans and active duty troops deserve so much better than this. So obviously you can see that this is a pretty controversial subject across the board because, you know, on one hand, you've got folks that are like, hey, look, we're trying to find a way to combat this carbon footprint because we're trying to reduce the impact that our government has on the environment. I get that. I'm all about the environment. Like we got it find more efficient ways to do stuff maybe the factory farming's not the way but again i would refer people to like regenerative farming i think that's a great way to do this stuff i think that's a great way to number one feed people food that's not processed and it's whole foods and also at the same time make it better for the environment and more sustainable for the environment so my personal take on it it's similar to the way that theodore roosevelt felt about conservation so one of the things he said was quote we have become great because of the lavish use of our resources but the time has come to inquire seriously what will happen when our forests are gone, when the coal, the iron, the oil, the gas are exhausted, when the soils have still further impoverished and washed into the streams, polluting the rivers, denuding the fields, and obstructing navigation. For those of you that don't know, Teddy Roosevelt was a avid conservationist and wildlife enthusiast, as well as a hunting enthusiast, and he believed that conservation was important. And there's a sustainable way to be able to live off the land and also not be eating unhealthy stuff, you know, like there's just ways 
to do it that are sustainable that I think people can come together to agree on. We just have to find ways to do it. I don't think that lab grown meat is necessarily the solution. As I said before, I think that sustainable farming, a sustainable agriculture, kind of the way that white oak pastures does it is probably more in line with what we would want to do. Because at the end of the day, you want to have locally raised animals in America. You want locally farmed agriculture in America. Because when things are local, it tastes better, it's fresher. You can make certain guarantees on how it was raised, how it was treated as it was raised. People feel better about buying American raised animals or American farmed products. Same as if you were in Great Britain and you wanted to buy some beef, you probably want to buy some beef that was raised in Great Britain. Okay, I know that this was raised here and it didn't get shipped on a container frozen across the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean or wherever. Feels more like farm to table, more sustainable, healthier, better for you, right? Teddy Roosevelt established 51 federal bird reserves, four national game preserves, five national parks, and 18 national monuments by enabling the 1906 American Antiquities Act. During his presidency, he also protected approximately 230 million acres of public land. He was all about sustainability. He was all about being able to live off the land, making sure that we took care of our land that we have here and we don't take it for granted. Like that's important. I get it, but you got to do it in a smart way. Back to the story. So this is an interesting quote I think that people would like to know. So there's a guy named Derek Risner who is a member of the UC Davis's Department of Food Science and Technology. He said if companies are willing to purify growth media to pharmaceutical levels, it uses more resources which then increases global warming potential. He also said if this product continues to be produced using the pharma approach, it's going to be worse for the environment and more expensive than conventional beef production. Now obviously I don't know that. I'm not a scientist. This is just a guy from the University of California. Interesting enough. Now, last piece is I want to read to you what Biomade's mission and vision is, just so you guys can see it directly from their website. It says, Biomade's mission is to enable domestic bioindustrial manufacturing at all scales, develop technologies to enhance U.S. bioindustrial competitiveness, de-risk investment in, in relevant infrastructure, and expand the biomanufacturing workforce to realize the economic promise of industrial biotechnology. We do this by catalyzing collaboration and innovation to reduce barriers to scale up and commercialization. Except accelerate technology deployment to create novel disruptive business models, redevelop existing biotechnology to enhance national competitiveness. Biomade's vision is to build a sustainable domestic end-to-end -end bioindustrial manufacturing ecosystem. If I was given a choice between a Petri dish with meat or a chicken, every time I'm going with a chicken, sorry, that's just me. Or if it's like, hey, you want some lab grown steak or do you want like a ribeye? Even if it's almost indistinguishable from the other, I'm still gonna be like, okay, which one's from a lab, which one's from an actual cow that was grazing in pastures and, and lived a long life. Gonna pick the cow because it's just like, hey, that was grown naturally. I'm just a big fan of organic natural food. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of putting things that are healthy and natural and organic into your body because it's number one, typically healthier. There's typically less chemicals involved, less process involved, safer. Like we don't know how this is gonna impact human health or your gut biome. We don't even know if this stuff is healthy for cats or rats to eat. You you know what I'm saying? That's just my personal opinion. I would prefer to eat natural, farm-raised, organic livestock, personally. I know this is probably very controversial. I would like to hear what everyone else thinks. Let me know in the comments if you would eat lab-grown meat or not, and how you feel about this. Do you think that the government should feed their troops lab-grown meat, or do you think we should stick with more natural means and more sustainable means of feeding them? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.